was an extraordinary remark you made just now. I'm very disappointed in you. I'm sorry about that, sir. I thought we had a nice relationship going. Well, nothing's perfect, sir. This is your suit, isn't it? Well, let me uh, let me look at it. Hmm, that's a nice, uh, nice fabric. Yes, I uh, I have one just like it. It is yours, sir. It was at the cleaners, and it was at the cleaners because it got wet in the rain. Oh, yeah. Yes, I did. Where did it get wet? Uh, where? Where? Oh, uh, where else? Uh, where it rains, of course. Uh, outside? When were you outside, sir? Oh, well, when I walked from my car to my office for the meeting with Congressman Mackey, and then when I walked from my office to my car uh, a couple of hours later. Except according to Congressman Mackey, the two of you left together. And it wasn't raining at that time. Well, then it must have been raining earlier. Uh, no, sir, that's not possible either. And how does your crystal ball deduce that? Well, sir, in your parking space, the ground under your car was dry. So it wasn't raining when you arrived. It had to start raining after you arrived. And I noticed that dry spot the following morning when I parked in your parking space. But there was only one dry spot, not two. That means there was only one car in the parking lot the previous night. That means Congressman Mackey was lying when he said he drove to your office and parked in your lot. And you were lying, sir, when you said you met him there, because he was never there. And you walked to Mr. Stapleton's house because you didn't want your car seen outside his house. And you killed Mr. Stapleton because he threatened to spill the beans about the favor you did him in 69 unless you did him another favor. And when you left Mr. Stapleton's house, it started to rain. And that's when you got wet. But it stopped raining before you returned to your car. And that's why the ground under your car was dry. That it? That's it, sir. <laughs> oh, you, uh, you disappoint me, Lieutenant. You are aware that an accusation of that nature requires proof of presence at the scene of the crime? Yes, sir, I'm aware of that. Do you have it? No, sir. But you do have a dead body with all the indications of suicide and a one self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. Tell me, was the powder on the gun hand? Yes, sir, there was. How did he get there if he didn't shoot himself? I have no idea. Then all you have is a load of unsubstantiated circumstantial poppycock. If you forgive me, I think I'll return to the uh, festivities. But the invitation remains open. You are welcome to stay. Please, uh, enjoy yourself, Lieutenant. Uh, stick around. You know, none of this would have been possible without your help. My pleasure.
That's it, sir. Everything? It works. Mr. Finch, this is a warrant to bring you in for questioning. We'll do it here. These gentlemen will serve as witnesses. You know your rights. Is there anyone you want present? Let's get this farce on the road. Just for the record, Mr. Finch, where were you on the night Mr. Stapleton was killed? At my home and in my office. When's the last time you saw Mr. Stapleton? I never met Mr. Stapleton. Have you ever been in Mr. Stapleton's house? Never. Did you kill Mr. Stapleton? Nope. This is a piece of chewing gum. Do you recognize it? Recognize a piece of chewing gum. Do you remember chewing it? Big pardon? Do you chew gum, sir? Occasionally. This gum was found in your trash can in your office. There were also three full packs in the top desk drawer, plus a fourth with only one stick missing. Uh, would you concede, Mr. Finch, that if the teeth marks in this gum match exactly with your teeth marks, would you concede that the average person would believe that it was you that chewed the gum? More hypothetical poppycock? That's not poppycock, sir. Not if it places you at the scene of the crime. And like me. Have you ever seen this? Police Chief Magazine, August issue. There's an article in here. That's how I know about this. I found out that in Fresno, California. Here, let me read this to you. Dr. Benoff, he's a forensic dentist. It says, he punctured the alibi of a suspect in a drug-related slaying by matching a wad of chewing gum discarded at the scene to the suspect's teeth. Seeing the match models, the suspect pleaded guilty. This is getting to be a big thing. Bite mark evidence. That famous serial murderer in Florida, Bundy, they put him to death because they could match his tooth marks with the bite marks on the two girls. It's getting to be big. I'm glad I read this article. Fascinating as this is, even if the gum were mine, it was not at the scene of the crime. But this was, this piece of cheese. This cheese was on Mr. Stapleton's desk on the night of his death, and the bite mark on this piece of cheese matches the bite mark on this piece of gum. This is your dental chart, Mr. Finch. This is an X-ray of your eye tooth. It has a distinct chip on the right front side and a number of small notches running along the other lateral edge. I haven't taken a mold of your tooth yet, Mr. French, but when I do, it's going to be the same thing as a fingerprint. The mold of your tooth is going to match exactly the bite mark on this piece of cheese, placing you at the scene of the crime. You're under arrest, sir. Suspicion of murder. Excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow workers, dear friends, this is a night to remember. One bite of cheese. One bite of cheese. Just one more thing.